Guys, this is Longbow Resort. Come on in and let me show you what it looks like inside. Alright. Alright, this is the bottom floor of the resort. As you walk in, you have your huge boulder that has a continuous dripping from the water from um, Arkansas Water Springs. Very, very, very nice. It was, it was a surprise as we walked in. We saw this uh, decoration, pretty much. So as you walk in, you have your pellet stove. Now we had to learn how to use the pellet stove, and it's very, very, very easy. He, you know, Mr. Ben supplies you with the pellets, and you just literally keep it going and. Uh, if you, if you don't know how to use a pellet stove, Mr. Ben will definitely let you know. And as you walk further, this is the living area. Nice, comfy couch. And this is the dining area table. As you will come to the table and drink your morning coffee and whatnot, you have your awesome, awesome view of the waterfall. The first night me and my husband were here, we just looked out, we just looked outside the window for like at least two hours. It was just uh, very, very peaceful. And let me walk to the kitchen for you. So it's a full kitchen. It does have a toaster oven. It doesn't have a huge oven like at your house, but a toaster oven, it works. So top, um, very big fridge. Um, he supplies your kitchen utensils and everything, um, coffee pot. Um, I'm 5'4", so it was a little, you know, it's a little tough for me, but it wasn't, it's not bad. Um, very cool decoration, and you see this other side of the stone, this way. And the bathroom, just a normal bathroom, kitchen, and shower, sink. And let me walk upstairs. literally just go on these winding steps. He built, he said he built a loft. He said he built a loft maybe 10 years ago, I think. Um, so on the loft, you have a queen bed, plenty of walk space, um, shelving. Um, behind the shelving, there is a switch. Turn on all the switches. One of the switches back there during night, it has a light for the waterfall. Turn on the switch, very pretty. Now, and now let me take you outside.
Hello, my name is John Pollard and I'm sitting out on the steps of the Longbow Cabin and I want to ask you two or three questions. Number one, have you been born again? Number two, have you been baptized the way the scripture says to be baptized? And number three, which is the most important one, what does Jesus Christ say about being born again? All right, being born again. Do you happen to know how many times the word born again is listed in the Bible? Being born again is the most important thing there is once you enter this world. Well, such an important topic as being born again, you would think it's throughout the Bible numerous times, um, as fluent as the word saved is, but it's not. The word born again is only listed twice by Jesus and once by Peter. Uh, so the two times that Jesus uses the word born again, he uses it all in the same context and that is found in John chapter 3, the story about Nicodemus. So right off the bat, who knew the word born again was only listed three times and twice by Jesus to tell you how to be born again? And once by Peter declaring that being born again already showing you how eternal it is most people don't get that answer right they think born again is in there numerous times but it's not so let's look at what Jesus has to say about how to be born again and this is the Nicodemus story John chapter 3 verses 1 through number Eight. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher that come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, there it is, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right off the bat, I need you to notice that this born again that Jesus talks about is far different from what Paul writes about in Romans chapter 10, verses 9, 10, and 11. The simple confess with your mouth, believe with your heart. You're going to see that these are totally different. And we'll explain that in a minute. Verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, now we're getting there. Born again requires being born of the water and born of Spirit. And no, not talking about childbirth we're talking about baptism verse number six Jesus that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I say unto thee ye must be born again now here's your clue the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit verse number nine nicodemus answered and said unto him how can these things be all right that's where we're going to stop because it's the same response that nicodemus had which is the same response that you're probably having which is he speaks of water and spirit and then he goes into verse number eight the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou heareth the sound thereof but canst tell canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit so when jesus says so is everyone that's born of the spirit he says everyone that is born again born of the spirit they're going to have the same proof of the invisible wind which is you hear the sound thereof really important 
Now, those of us that's been born again, we know this scripture and this jumps out at us and we confirm this with the signs following of the evidence of speaking in tongues because it's not us that has spoken in tongues, but it is the spirit that speaketh. Now, water baptism. It'd be easier if I show you, since we brought up the comparison of Paul in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, 11, 12, Paul writing about confess with your mouth, believe with the heart, thou shalt be saved. It's important to notice that what does Paul really talk about when he's working to get someone born again? Because when he writes the letter to the Romans, you have to realize he's writing to the church who's already born again. So he's not telling them how to be born again. But perhaps he's telling them the beginning steps of being born again. But in Acts chapter 19, verse 2 through 6, or 1 through 6, we're going to see what Paul has to say about this being born again and receiving the Holy Spirit. Because this here verse fits most of us. Acts chapter 19, and I'm reading from the King James Rainbow Bible. Uh, because it's pretty awesome. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. Now we know the disciples are followers of Jesus. And Paul finding certain disciples, what do you, I mean, what do you mean? Uh, how do you know they were disciples? Did he ask them? Uh, did he see the way they were dressed? Uh, did he see where they were hanging out at? Maybe the synagogue, the temple? Um, maybe because they were on the side of the streets talking about Jesus or talking about repentance and baptism because that's what John the Baptist actually came to do preach the baptism of repentance and to baptize our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before Jesus received the Holy Spirit since we talked brought that up notice after Jesus received the Holy Spirit that was the first and only time that you hear God announce Jesus as his son after the Holy Spirit pretty awesome and a whole different Bible study but back to Acts 19 and 2 so after Paul finds these certain disciples verse 2 he said unto them have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost now that's real important that they admit that they had never heard of any Holy Ghost because if they had heard of a Holy Ghost then they would have known what the signs of the Holy Ghost actually was or the proof that you received it uh, uh, for instance if they had been walking down the streets and heard this little crowd of people just talking jibber jabberish or what have you one might have said what is that God forsaken sound they're making and somebody would have said, oh, it's just those folks talking about they got the Holy Ghost. And then the disciples here that Paul's talking about would have simply said, well, we heard that, oh, we heard some small group talking about they had the Holy Ghost because they were talking a bunch of Bible, but we didn't believe them. But that's not what they say at all. They say they simply had never heard of any Holy Ghost. Therefore, they're not going to know what the proof of the Holy Ghost is. But Paul does. Here we go. Verse number three. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Notice, as soon as Paul finds out they don't have the Holy Spirit, the next thing he does is bags up and says, Well, how were you baptized? Isn't that what we just saw Jesus talk about to Nicodemus? Be born of water and spirit? Wow. All right. Verse number four. Then said Paul John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him 
that is on Christ Jesus. Yeah. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now that's really amazing because they had never heard of any Holy Ghost. So how did they know to speak in tongues of their own account? Well, they didn't. And we're going to look at that in a minute. What that speaking in tongues actually is and actually was. But something real important here for everyone that's already been water baptized and baptized with the titles. You know, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Which is wrong. I'm sorry. That's not what Jesus said. He didn't say to repeat after me as you baptize. He said, let's flip to it. Matthew chapter 28. The Lord Jesus Christ wants you born again. And in order to be born again, you have to see, you have to hear the truth, which means you, whatever you've done or thought, if it's wrong, someone has to tell you, hey, I'm sorry, that was close, but it, it just... It just wasn't what Jesus was saying. And then you have to come to a point where you, where you repent, confess the sin, and do it right out of obedience. All right, what does Jesus say in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19? Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what we're doing. Teach all nations what? baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 19 again. Jesus says, Teach all nations, do the teaching, and baptize them in the name of the Father. Okay, so he's not saying repeat after me. He's telling them to do something real specific. Baptize them in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Baptize them in the name of the Father. Okay, what's the Father's name? Okay, and of the Son. Okay, does the Father and the Son have the same name? You better believe it. His name is Jesus. And of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so then these three are one and they are embodied in the name Jesus? You better believe it. So Jesus wasn't telling them to go and repeat this baptism. He was saying go and perform this baptism by baptizing them in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why when you flip over into the New Testament, Acts, because any book after the book of Acts, you don't see anyone being water baptized. And you don't see anyone receiving the Holy Spirit because those are letters written to the church, which was already baptized and born of the Spirit. Think about it. Paul wouldn't write to the Corinthians, uh, to the Corinthian church, I'm sorry, the letter to the Corinthians, to the Romans, um, Ephesians, <clears throat> Hebrews, all these, these different letters. He didn't write those to the sinners down on the corner, read this letter and learn how to be learn how to be. No, he was writing these letters to those that have already received Jesus Christ, already been born again, but just didn't have a clue on what to do next. <laughs> because you don't have to have head knowledge to receive the Holy Spirit. You have to simply act in obedience and believe. And you will be born again. Now, we were looking to see, and I was going to tell you about We made mention about this Holy Spirit doing the speaking and, and the disciples of John speaking in an unknown tongue. And it's found right here in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they 
were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And, wow, there's that wind again. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. So when one is speaking in tongues for the very first time when they receive the Holy Spirit, Scripture declares, as it was on the day of Pentecost, that it, verse 4, that it's the Spirit that gave the utterance. So that was the Holy Spirit using your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your sound to confirm that he was in there. Let's face it. That lines up with exactly what Jesus says. Which the wind bloweth as it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where they're coming, where they're going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. That's such an important verse. It's such an important verse that we should just flip to it and reread it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, by the word of God. Verse John 3, chapter 3, verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou heareth the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth so is everyone that's born of the Holy Spirit so there was a sound made on the day of Pentecost when they got born again if it wasn't a sound you wouldn't know and you can't judge being born again based off chill bumps you can't judge being born again based off a feeling you can't judge it based off tears why because Jesus says you're gonna hear a sound and it's going to happen to everyone that's born again. Now, we take that word everyone. I mean, we picture it big time when it says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he's Lord. We literally see in our mind everybody ever born bowing down, confessing him as Lord. But when it comes to Jesus saying everyone that receives the Holy Spirit, they hear a sound. We tend to think that everyone doesn't mean everyone. <laughs> but it does. All right. Water baptism. Now, you, you, you have to think about this. If you were baptized in a church and they pronounced over you, I baptize you in the name of the Son and, in the, Holy, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you, you have to say to yourself, was that right? After this Bible study, you have to say, was that right? And then if you're not sure... Look throughout the book of Acts and see if anybody ever in the Bible was ever baptized that way. Especially, well, period. Before the resurrection, it talks about baptism because John was doing it and then Jesus' disciples were doing it. Matter of fact, scripture even says that Jesus baptized more than John, but he actually didn't. His disciples did the baptism because Jesus did not come to baptize you in water. He came to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. But you have to look at Peter. How did Peter baptize? What does Peter say? Well, that's found in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Verse 37, 38, 39. Good verses. Because verse 37 applies to you and I. Verse 37, Acts chapter 2. Now, when they heard this, and these are all the people that are outside that just, that participated in the crucifixion of Jesus, all the people that are outside that actually heard this sound coming from the upper room. This is what they say. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? Then Peter said unto them, Here it is, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ wow for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost so 
we know that Peter has the keys to the kingdom. So either Peter is being flat out rebellious and saying, I'm not going to baptize like Jesus said, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Or by revelation of the Holy Spirit that is now living in Peter, Peter gets the revelation on what Jesus actually meant. Because the first message is clear. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. All right, that's pretty clear. We see how Peter says to be baptized. He says, repent and be baptized. Well, there are a few more spots that talks about baptism. Why are we talking about baptism first? Because if you're not willing to be obedient and get re-baptized like the disciples did in Acts chapter 19, John's disciples, if you're not willing and obedient to get re-baptized the way Jesus really said it, then it's going to be pretty much impossible for you to receive the Holy Spirit. And you're going to go through life with this denial of being born again when it just simply hasn't happened. And it won't happen as long as that pride is in the way. Because when Peter says repent, I mean it literally means to turn away from. To turn away from what? Everything. All the wrong. Especially the lie of self-righteousness. Now what's that self-righteousness? Oh, I know I'm born again. I confessed him. I asked him into my heart. I made him my Lord and Savior. That's self-righteousness because that is not what Jesus said on what it takes to be born again. Self-righteousness. And you have to repent for that. Lord, I'm so sorry. Notice I didn't say, Father, forgive me. I have sinned. That's not repenting. And that's not confessing one's sins. It should go something like, Father God, I'm so sorry. I've been going around all these years declaring that I was born again, confessing to people that I've got you as my Lord and Savior. Lord, and I just simply missed it. I, I didn't fulfill the things that you asked me to do out of obedience. Lord, matter of fact, I never even searched your scripture out to see if what even, what was even told to me by the pastor that didn't know if that was even right. I took man's word, Father God, over your word. I took the lazy route and just did and believe whatever he said and not dig out what you said. And then walk through it obedience and actually get rebaptized. If you're looking for a church that, matter of fact, ask your pastor who rebaptized you in the first place. Just say, uh, hey, pastor, I, I don't mean to offend you or anything, but I saw it in scripture that you baptized me wrong. Now, don't be offended because if he's offended, then you should know then that that's, that's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit. And then you should know to hit the road, Jack. Don't come back. It's not going to come to that. Tell the pastor that you were baptized wrong and that he did it wrong and you were studying out scripture and you saw where no one in the Bible was baptized the way he baptized you. And by telling him that, you have a chance to fix things with him. He may not have known that his method of baptism was wrong. He may not have known that he hasn't been born again. And waiting until you get to heaven to determine if you've been born again, my friend, is way, way too late. You do not want to hear the words, depart from me, you works of iniquity, I never knew you. Now that is a pretty awesome passage. And it's found in Matthew chapter 7. This was so puzzling to me. Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So what's the will of the Father? Okay. What's the will of the Father? No, really. If you know what the will of the Father is, Jesus declares by promise right now that you'll be in heaven. All right. 22. Many will say to me in that day, many will say to me in that day, not a few, not most, many. 
Uh, many, well, many does qualify as most, but many is bigger than most. Um, many is like the, we calculated this up one day. When you look at, when you look at Abraham, the number of years it took from Abraham having the promised son, Isaac, up to Moses. Because when they get in the wilderness, Moses counts to people. And you're going to see 300,000 plus, all from Abraham and Sarah. And you look at the number of years it took from Abraham and Sarah to the wilderness. Then you go back, because you got to get a comparison of 300, um, 300,000 plus people in a certain amount of time. And then you go back into Genesis. Yes, I'm, yes, you have to dig into your scripture and study these things out so you can, so you can know. Go back and find out Adam and Eve. Start at the ages when they have Seth. They already have Cain and Seth. And they have daughters. But look at how many years it took from Adam and Eve coming out the garden. And you can do this by calculating their ages. When it goes in the lineage and it says he lived this long and he lived this long. He lived this long. This long, then you have to go back and find out. Okay, well, this was the son of him. This was the son of him, and you have to do some adding and some subtracting to find out that number of years up to the flood. It's possible. It takes some time, but you're going to find out that there's over a million people because they don't just have one man having children, Isaac. They have Seth and Cain multiplying and multiplying. And the daughters of Adam and Eve multiplying and multiplying. So you're going to see that there's over a million people on the planet at this time. And none of them are cavemen. Nonetheless, and God spares only eight souls out of over a million people. Now that's what many is. Which means over a million people died and went to hell. If that's safe to say. And he only spared eight souls. So that's what this many means. Twenty-two. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? They sound like believers and they sound like they know the name of Jesus. And in thy name cast out devils. Devils only leave when you have faith and you speak the name of Jesus. Oh, I, yes, you must have faith. To speak the name of Jesus. The seven sons of Shiva in Acts, they spoke the name of Jesus over that devil. And that devil's response was, Paul, Jesus I know and Paul I know. And then that devil beat those men up. So for these men to confess that they cast out devils in the name of Jesus, that means they're just not some average run the mill so called churchgoers. And in thy name done many wonderful works. So yes, they know the name of Jesus. They've done all these works in the name of Jesus. They've lived their life for Jesus. They've done all they knew to do for Jesus. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Don't let that be you. Because Jesus doesn't know you until you've been born again. Yes, I know he knows every hair on your head. But that's not the know he talks about. That knew, knew you is like Adam knew Eve and bore Cain. Adam knew Eve and bore Seth. That's the same knew as in Sodom and Gomorrah when the men were big in homosexuality. And they banged on the door of Lot's house, banging on that door, banging on that door. And they say, send out those men that came into town today so that we may know them. Now, don't be confused. Lot knew what was going on because Lot says, okay, wait, wait. Let me send unto you my virgin daughters, my two virgin daughters. Take them. And they say, no, give us those two men. So Lot knew that that term knew was a sexual entering into term. 
By the way, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for such act. For that very act. No matter what else Sodom and Gomorrah was doing, in Scripture, that's the only act that the Scripture records that these men were wanting to perform with the men angels. If that's you, find out the root of the problem. It is Satan. Confess to the Lord that you're in that situation. Confess to the Lord that that's not normal. Confess to the Lord that, Lord, you made me and you can change me. And he will. I actually saw that in scripture um, about four mornings ago. It was pretty awesome. <clears throat> now, people always said that in, in Matthew chapter 7, 23, they said that these people were told, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Uh, I never knew you because they uh, they were prideful. They they done all these things in the name of Jesus and they got there and they just full of pride and the Lord told them, I never knew you. Get out of here. That's not what the scripture says. Well, these men, they were backsliders. That's not what the scripture says. Well, they, well, uh, well, they must have got a divorce or something or they must have committed a sin that was uh, 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 unforgivable or uh, blasphemy and that's what it was yeah I don't that's not what Jesus says Jesus says in 23 then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity the reason why Jesus told them they cannot come in is because he says it I never knew you you were never born again hey let's face it the name of Jesus has so much power, a non-believer can use it repeatedly and get results. You don't have to be born again to see God work in your life and work in your life and work in your life. But you do have to be born again to have life. All right, I know this was long. I know this was long. But it's not over yet. <laughs> Uh, we're going to flip to Acts because I want to show you two more spots in the scripture where other men baptized in the name of Jesus, not, excuse me, not in the titles because you still need convincing. Why do I know you need convincing? Because you haven't stopped this video, jumped up, called your pastor and said, hey, baptize me again Sunday morning the right way. But you will. All is well. Don't stop the video. Just kidding. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Wait a minute. Seeing and hearing the miracles. So you mean to tell me that there's miracles going on all by this one man, Philip, and it's not based off the people's faith? It's based off his power in the Lord? Yes. Verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Okay, so now we see people with great joy in the city. We see people having been healed miraculously. We see demons coming out. We see people hearing the word of God uh, from Philip and, and, and enjoying it, loving it. And by the modern church of today, they would say, Oh, Holy Ghost filled born again church. But it's not. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they gave, they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. 
he bewitched the people, had them thinking that he was of God when he himself knew that he wasn't. Verse 11. And to him they had regards because that for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery, witchcraft, Satan, not God. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip's preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, you should go through your Bible and circle everywhere you see the word kingdom of God. And then you're going to see that that's a direct tie to receiving the Holy Spirit. Kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself, the sorcerer, believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done now when the apostles which were at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john whom when they were to come down prayed for them that they might receive the holy ghost now that is to say that baptism believe in um, the miracles being healed by God is this scripture says that is not the proof that you received the Holy Spirit and all that can happen and you still not have received the Holy Spirit but the church in Jerusalem knew how important it was that they received the Holy Spirit so they sent Peter and John verse 16 for as yet he was fallen upon none of them. He refers to the Holy Ghost. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So Philip the evangelist goes to Samaria and baptizes the whole city, even the sorcerer, in the name of Jesus, not in the name of the Father, Son, and in the Holy Ghost. Please be convinced and get baptized the right way in obedience and continue to seek the Holy Spirit, you will receive it. You will speak in an unknown tongue. And if you have not spoken in an unknown tongue, you haven't received it. But you will. Keep seeking Him. Verse 17. Then they, I'm sorry, then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he receives the Holy Ghost. Then Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou, ought, thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. We have to wrap this up. Read Acts chapter 10 and 11 and get more confirmation. Um, thank you for listening. I, I really hope you go back and dig out some more. Um, check out a YouTube channel. Subscribe to the page. Check out one of my channels called A, a Couple Thousand Testimonies. Or just put that in the search and you'll see videos of people already being born again. And their testimony of being born again. Um, I, I've recorded longer than I should have, but it was all worth it. Thank you. God bless you. Don't.